Natalie, and welcome to Kiss My Ass. Today we have Mark Edwards, a comedian and recent graduate from the Humber School of Comedy. Welcome, Mark. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you for having me. So you were recently nominated for the Cream of Comedy Award. What was it like being selected? Uh, it was really cool. Uh, the first round is called Fresh Meat, and that was 21 acts. I think four were sketch troops and the rest were stand-up. And then from that, a uh, bunch of judges, including Nikki Payne and last year's winner, Mike Rita, chose five acts to participate in Cream of Comedy. Uh, so that was kind of an honor to get to be in the top five. So what was it like doing a show on the Second City stage? It was awesome, uh, partly because the stage is cool and it's at Second City, which is like the most recognized comedy establishment in the world. And uh, also, there was a full crowd, and that's always good. Have a couple hundred people there. And uh, it's not too big, it's not cavernous. I've played big, like bigger sort of uh, auditoriums before, and when you can hear your voice echo, it's not very nice. But this is a tighter space, but still uh, filled out with a lot of people, and it was, just, it was really fun. Did you get nervous performing on stage? No. The least nervous I ever get is when I'm actually on stage. It's having to wait to go up where you get really anxious and uh, you're kind of backstage just being like, I want to go up now. And then once you get up there, that's like the best. That's the easiest part. It's the waiting. It's terrible. And then even afterwards, you're like, oh, now it's over because it's so fun doing it, you know? So I don't actually get nervous on stage, but I get kind of anxious backstage waiting to go on. So do you have any way of coping with the jitters? Um, I drink a lot of water and then I always have to pee when I'm on stage. But no, no, usually just kind of sit in the corner backstage. I don't do any like breathing exercises. People pretend that that helps, but it doesn't. <gasps> hmm. I think, you know, my chi was relatively in balance. So how was the Humber program? Fun. It wasn't even school. You learn things, but it wasn't like going to school. Um, took me an hour and a half to get there every day, and I didn't care how long it took to get there. Uh, I would have gone, I would have done the program if it was in Helsinki. Doesn't make a difference because it was so fun. All the teachers are professionals, uh, whether they're improv teachers who taught um, like Bill Murray or stand-up comedians who knew Jim Carrey when he was 22 years old. So every day was fun, everybody was cool, and uh, I just had a blast the whole time. So I heard you also volunteer at your high school. Can you tell me a bit more about that? For real, there are a lot of teachers who think I still go to the school. When I show up, they're like, hey, what, shouldn't you be in class? Or like a teacher yelled at me for using my cell phone. But no, um, I go back to do workshops with the drama classes because I'm still tight with my drama teacher. Um, so this year I'm doing some sketch writing and performing workshops with the grade 10s and voice with the grade 12s. and I have an exercise where I make everybody get up in front of the class and do an impression until somebody can guess it. That sounds hilarious. Can we play that game right now? An old man walks into a doctor's office. I, I don't know. It's Gilbert Gottfried, so you lose, but I win. No, uh, I would lose because somebody couldn't guess it. Sorry, I guess it wasn't good enough. Um. Wait a second, Doc. You're telling me you made, made a time machine out of a DeLorean? Michael J. Fox. Good. Good work. When did you decide to pursue comedy as a career? Um, yesterday. Um, well, from grade 8 till grade 12, I was working on a portfolio for animation school. And then I didn't get in because of at Sheridan, which is a very prestigious one. Um, uh, that's when I actually decided to study comedy, but I always wanted to do stand-up and stuff. I just never did it in high school. But uh, I think secretly, I didn't really want to be an animator. I just wanted to write funny stories and then do voices in cartoons and things like that. So you're kind of known for your impersonations. Could you do one for us? Uh, sure. My favorite one that I do is Stephen Hawking which I just discovered by happenstance, I've never used that word before, uh, in like grade 10 English, <clears throat> uh, I turned to my friend, I was like, hey Rob, can I borrow pencil? <laughs> and I was like, this is the funnest thing to do, and I did it like all day. And from what I could, I've seen, no one 
Not a lot of people do the Stephen Hawking impression, and uh, it's my favorite one to do. And it always gets a good reaction on stage, too. Is there a performer out there that inspires you to do comedy? The one performer who I watch now and stuff that is like most inspirational to me is a guy named Brian Regan, who not a lot of people know. But he's a totally clean comedian, and he, he was on Letterman over 20 times in one year because he's so popular. But uh, he's hilarious, but he doesn't have to swear or talk about his southern parts in order to make people laugh, which a lot of people tend to do these days. Do you think it's hard getting people to laugh when you're performing clean comedy? Um, not if it's smart. Maybe that's what the challenge is, because you have to come up with a, something that makes people think. Um, but I don't really do that, because most of my stuff is kind of silly and stupid. You were there. It's nothing. No, uh, nothing tickling your brain there uh, with, oh, oh, I never thought of that. That's not, no, that's not the kind of stuff I write. But I think if you're goofy, people laugh at it, and you don't have to be crude to be silly. Now, can you tell me about your dream gig? Ultimate dream would probably be like Saturday Night Live or something like that, um, if they ever revive Mad TV. Because on sketch shows like that, you get to play a whole bunch of different characters. You get to do something new every week, every day, pretty much. Every, every sketch, you're doing something different, so that's fun. And things like Saturday Night Live, you get to do a lot of impressions and different characters, and you get to write, and you get to stay up late and eat jelly beans while you jam on different ideas with a whole bunch of different funny people. So it's fun to be in an ensemble type thing. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. So where can we see you next? On November 22nd at the Rivoli downtown in Toronto. The show is called Lafrica. I'll be hosting it, and it's featuring this year's Cream of Comedy winners, British Teeth. Thanks for watching, and next week we'll be interviewing Gwyneth Paltrow. She'll be here to talk about her new book, The Day I Met Gary Gould. See you next week on Kiss My Ass.